partner Richie Garcia has been out there patiently waiting for him. Now Panella is discussing balls and strikes. He, he threw just him out of the game. Up. That's right. He has no right to call and ask him about balls and strikes. Richie's saying, hey, you asked me about a ball and strike. You're out of the game. Panella wanted him to come out. He says, you threw me out for that, and that's what he said. Now, we'll leave it up to you to be how creative as you want to on Panella and Garcia. A couple what? of hot-blooded Ital uh -huh. uh, Latins here. Garcia, of course, and Panella, both Spanish. Richie Cuban descent. Panella is Spanish. And you can see that they're going to get into it here. Panella Both. obviously waited for Garcia to come out. That's the only reason he was out there. He walked all the way out to the mound. Didn't say anything to Neil Allen. He was going to wait till Garcia came out there. There have been some close calls. Allen had questioned a couple of pitches simply by his gestures on the mound. Obviously, as soon as Panella asked about balls and strikes, Garcia didn't wait a second longer. No, he, he didn't. Did. He was out there, and he just kind of leaned in and said, Lou, what are you doing out here? And Lou says, well, I was wondering about those balls and strikes you've been calling. <laughs> Top six. Lou Pote inside on Edgar Martinez, and Edgar is not happy. He gets up. Says, you want to dance? He comes after him. Take another look at this one. Ball will hit Martinez on the hand, and then watch it flex up and knocks off his helmet. He's certainly going to get a shiner out of this thing. And Martinez, this chili is running hot. As we move on, bottom A, Joel Pinheiro, Troy Gloss, and tooth for tooth kind of a thing there. Not sporting by Pinheiro. Salute. Panella takes Pinheiro out of the game. Irabu is on the hill, and there's Ruben Sierra. And that'll do it. Frank Catalanato, we can play anywhere. The A-Rod to Palmero. Oh, wait. What's Big Lou saying? Lou saying he wasn't anywhere near the bag. Look at how far away from the bag is. And then, Rafael Palmero looks like he took the, his foot off the bag. You know, so. it's got to be worse than that, though. Oh, my old skip. Back. And they got to see their son put on quite a show. Proudly. Bottom three, two on, two down, scoreless. Pinheiro walks Greg Vaughn. That loads him up, Mike. Now you got full count on Ben Grief. Tell you what, look at the framing job by Dan Wilson. Such a great receiver behind home plate. And Joel Pinheiro wanted that one. And I think, I think Lou wanted that pitch as well. Yeah, I think so. Look at the K-Zone box. Look at Dan Wilson receiving it. Well, I tell you what, way too close to not swing. Let's go to the eighth. Still 5 nothing, and Lou's frustration now has gone to a boil. He and John Shulak. My parents come, came to see my team win. Look at this. 1978, Lou Pinello's in right field, Kari Ostremski, Ed Ferrero had pitched. I remember Ostremski doing the same thing, it was hilarious. But this is the best part. And Dan's going, um, I still Shulak have a picture. will not clear off the plate for him. You, your guy made the mess, you sweep it. I'll show you. Didn't, the, didn't his parents tell him to clean his room when he was growing up? You make a mess, you clean your room. It's Ben Davis. Hits one up the middle. Mike Young gets the ball. Throws it to first, and Davis is called out by umpire C.B. Buckner, who will get a mouthful from Lou Pinella. And perhaps the frustration of the second half of the season bubbling to the surface. Pinella gets the immediate ejection, and then we have a class A top-notch four-star classic four-star Lou Pinella hissy fit off comes the hat and kick and dirt you could see the grounds crew trying to keep away from Lou they nearly swept up his hat and so we got the hat we got the screaming we got the kicking in the dirt there's only one thing remaining that would be the tearing up of first base and the throwing of it and we tear it up and we throw it but apparently uh not a good toy not Good enough of a toss as Buckner looks on. There we go. He got the distance, and it's been a while since we've seen this out of Lou. We miss it. But yeah, Lou got ejected, and Buckner looked like that throughout the entire ejection. And we'll see if this place if play it first. And uh, it was awfully close. It looks like Lou had a point, but we don't know if he needed it. Third, next batter, Bobby Kilty. Hi, have a welt. That's not good. 
benches come out. Jeremy Davis issues a warning to both teams, and Brad Radke ignores the warning. He hits Toby Hall. He's ejected immediately. Later in the sixth, Johan Santana pitching to Marlon Anderson. You don't cross an Anderson. Yeah, I know that. Sometimes you do. You hit him in the back. Look, no retaliation. Anderson to first, but no ejection. Bottom Eddie, six near Eddie, uh, Beerbrot. Eddie, he goes Sean Estes on Corey Koski. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Pinellas thrown out. Beer brats tossed. Five ejections in all. Four hit batsmen. Twins win 8-5. Rays and Astros. Bottom eight. Bases loaded for the D-Rays. Up 8-7 after they trailed 7-0. Jeff Kent to left. Orlando Merced scores. Morgan Ensberg. See? That's my John Miller imitation. Lou goes berserk. Carl Crawford throws home. Here's the play again. Toby Hall, great shot blocking the plate. Hall's glove spot shadow. Looks like Ensberg may have been out. Pinella gives home plate up. Matt Hollowell is two cents worth. And Lou blows a gasket and has to be restrained. This was only a matter of time. Now we give you four chances here. What will Lou do? Will he A, throw his hat? B, kick his hat, C, just cover up home plate with dirt, or heave a base. The answer is C, Lou doing what Lou does best. Astros win 11-8 after blowing a 7-0 lead. They passed the Cubs for the NL Central lead for the first time. A top nine game tied at one. Rocco Baldelli against Braden Looper. And he gives you the Sports Center strike zone so you can see where that pitch was. No Quez Tech. Called strike three, Lou Pinella not happy. By the way, D-Ray shortstop Ray Ordonez could miss the remainder of the season with a torn knee ligament. Lou's going to tear a blood vessel here pretty soon after the Sports Center strike zone again shows that that pitch to Aubrey Huff may have been inside. So Pinella gets tossed by home plate umpire Chris Guccione. Bench coach John McLaren. Baltimore, Tampa Bay do not think, oh, what a snoozer this must be. It is must-see television courtesy of Lou Pinella. The theatrics are going to come in the top of the ninth after Luis Matos is called safe on that there play. There comes Pinella, and he is peed. Grab the earmuffs as Lou gets the quick heave ho from Jerry Lang. Get out. Another look at the play. The throw now. It clearly beat Matos, but Travis Lee did go high with the tag. Uh, the call goes the O's way, and this is where we have our way with Mr. Pinella, who would not be around to see the O's tie this game at five in the ninth. He was busy icing his swollen leg after a four-minute performance. He said afterwards that that hat was begging to be kicked. Good kick. Good. We thought it'd be swell to flashback to Pinella's top five tirades at number five while piloting Seattle. Pinella forgets to keep his cool and remember that anger is not an argument. The dirt and the umpires had no comment. At number four, Pinella goes purple while managing the Reds. First the hat goes and then goes on a mission to capture home plate. Settles for kicking dirt on it and again, the dirt had no comment. At number three, back in the great Northwest, Pinella auditions for a place-kicking job with the Seahawks. Looks like a, a Micamire or, or maybe a Gogolak. I think they were from Washington State. And he, up there, he might have a job. And this right here, that's the last time that Junior smiled. At number two, still in Seattle, and as Mark Twain said, when angry, count four. When very angry, swear. And when very, very angry, slam the lid kick the lid, and then toss the bag a couple times. <laughs> At number one in our Lou Pinella tirades, as voted on by the fellow who cut this highlight, back in a red uniform, Pinella looks like he's auditioning for the U.S. Olympic discus team with that first throw. Tonight. Wow. This one thrown over Ortiz, and Ortiz wants a piece. But Lance Carter trying to make his way out. Hall will grab him, and the bench is well empty. Well, several of the Red Sox getting in there at Carter and others very quickly. Well, the first guy that I saw out after the pitcher was Trot Nixon. Juan Brazelton for his participation should probably go. But you know that's the hard thing deciding when you get a pig pile out there like they had. It's hard to you know the, unless you've been in one of those situations, it's really hard to see what's going on in a lot of occasions. You kind of focus in on one thing and you miss a lot. There's so many different areas as we saw with that brawl last year with the Yankees. Got all kinds of things going on back by the backstop. 